Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, uh, Using Automation and AI to Accelerate Salesforce Testing to Ultimately Ensure the Success of Your Business Critical Applications. So before we get into today's conversation, uh, let's just go through a little bit of uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom um, uh, housekeeping. I'm sure pretty much everybody is familiar with Zoom now. Um, but uh, everybody's uh, microphones are off, um, but we do have a chat channel and a Q&A box. So um, please throw questions into the Q&A box as we go through today's conversation and as we go through the demonstration. We'll kind of review those as we go and then we'll kind of pick the appropriate ones to cover at the end of the session. But then we'll also follow up individually with uh, individual questions we don't get time to, do, to go through. Um, just a quick audio check. Um, you should see that there's a, ha a raise hand button inside of uh, Zoom. If you could just raise your hand to let me know you're able to hear me okay. Okay, a few hands have gone up. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So uh, with that being said, let's kind of get into it. Um, and uh, let's talk about how we can help uh, you guys today. Um, my name is Mark Lambert. I'm the VP of products at Parasoft, um, and I'm joined by my colleague, Chris Colosimo, who is the product manager for Parasoft suite of functional test automation technology. And we're going to talk about the Parasoft Salesforce testing solution today, and we're going to talk about how it can streamline your testing process and really enable your uh, business critical applications. But before we jump into that, it's worthwhile just taking a step back for a moment and discussing why your organization has decided to go forward with developing applications on top of the Salesforce platform, not just using it as a, a CRM system, but actually delivering functionality to your customers who may be internal, but also are quite probably external um, and key components of your, of your business go to market. The first thing, obviously, it's got the complete ecosystem. You've gone customer 360. You've got all of the components that you need to be able to satisfy your customers' requirements. Um, it has everything from all of your reporting and analytics. Um, obviously, there's the uh, Mulesoft technology as well as the Heroku technology as well, which really gives you a complete ecosystem for you to be able to leverage. And the key thing being is you don't have to worry about the technology. So you're able to get going quickly. You don't have to worry about uh, the cloud deployment. This is already in the cloud. You don't have to worry about multi-tenancy. Your compliance requirements are related to data privacy or Section 508 ADA compliance. Um, you don't have to worry about things like GDPR because there's the framework in place for you to be able to ensure that. Um, obviously, you've got the data management and the flexible data management with the custom objects, but you've got all of the reporting framework that sits on top of that. There's even AI that's already available for you to be able to do advanced analytics and enable your organization as a whole to take the data that's hidden within your applications and really make critical business decisions. Ultimately, this is all about rapidly delivering innovation to the market delivering it through a whole variety of different channels. Uh, mobile first is um, often a channel where organizations are trying to accelerate their delivery mar to market through the mobile uh, platforms. But if they have to worry about all of the backend technology, the framework, the infrastructure, often it can really slow you down, um, re making it harder to respond to feedback, uh, making it harder to enable your um, uh, your, your internal resources, your, your domain experts to actually have a meaningful impact on the innovations that, that are released. So this is another thing that Salesforce gives you. It gives you the ability to get going quickly and enabling your domain experts and turning them into citizen developers, leveraging both the low code and the no code interfaces that are there available to you. So you're already familiar with this. This is why your organization has chosen to move forward and develop applications on top of the Salesforce platform. But what about testing? Really, testing is not necessarily built into that workflow from the beginning, from that decision-making process. And it has some challenges when we're talking about testing the Salesforce ecosystem and especially uh, some of the Lightning interface components. So the problem with testing is testing doesn't start as being the most important thing, um, but it increases in importance as you increase your adoption 
of Salesforce technology and build more and more functionality, more and more uh, applications, um, and more teams integrating, um, and then your business criticality increases. So you might start by just leveraging Salesforce as it is, doing some lightweight customizations um, of the UI or some of the basic workflows. Um, I may then add um, additional application um, uh, uh, frameworks into this. I might actually start bringing data um, and extending my Salesforce implementation to bring in data from an external system. I'm then going to start um, probably connecting more systems to Salesforce, having other systems pulling data from Salesforce. Um, I'm going to have multiple applications, and those applications are going to start growing and multiplying. So now I'm concerned about cross-team collaboration. I'm concerned about making sure that we deploy our applications and our iterations in a way that is not um, impacting each other. Um, and I will also want to start you know, keeping that accelerated delivery um, um, that gives me the ultimate power of, or allows me to ex, um, extract the ultimate power from Salesforce. And then you might, I might even start using Salesforce as a backend system, creating headless interfaces or uh, composite APIs that are being used by systems that don't have a UI. So maybe an IoT device, for example, connecting back into Salesforce. And I need to create an API that that IoT device can connect through, extract out the information, and actually have bi-directional communication uh, within the ecosystem. So the challenge here is that testing increases in complexity as we increase in our adoption. So what do we want to be able to do? Well, we have to really start figuring out how we can control that complexity because the challenge is as we get up and going and we're starting to iterate and we're creating more advanced applications and the business gets used to that rapid delivery, a quick iteration, which is the power of Salesforce. The thing is my business criticality increases and my forgiveness of failure decreases. So when it's a small pilot project, you're using it internally, you're doing some rapid um, prototyping, you know, the forgiveness of failure is pretty high. Okay, yeah, we're just starting out. But as you move further and further through your adoption, you're going to see that if the system fails, it has a business critical impact. So what can we do to help mitigate that? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how we can build quality into your process and how we can introduce testing at different layers of the application so that you can do three things. Firstly, test better. We're gonna test better by validating the functional and non-functional requirements of your application. We're also gonna test quicker. As you get more and more business criticality and as the applications grow in complexity, you actually need to test more. You need to test more data permutations, you need to test more use cases, but if you're not careful, testing becomes the thing that slows you down. So what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to accelerate your testing practice so you can accelerate your delivery and maintain the velocity that the business has become uh, used to. And then last but not least, we're gonna talk about how we can make testing cheaper. Um, obviously, test environments are a problem across the, your entire software development organization, and it's equally true within the Salesforce world. You've got systems that are connected to Salesforce. You've got Salesforce connected to other systems. How can we simplify that problem and reduce the costs associated with your test environments, not just the Salesforce environment, but also the external systems that that test environment is connected to? So we're going to talk through each of these three today, and then we're going to wrap up and talk about how one of our clients has actually achieved all three of these through the application of Parasoft's technologies. So with first, let's focus on better, how we can validate the functional and non-functional user experience. And for that, I'm going to hand over to Chris, and Chris, you can go ahead and do the, the hard work now. <laughs> so thanks, Mark. Can you hear me okay? He can hear you great. All right, wonderful. All right, so let's, yeah, let's get started with that uh, validation of the functional and non-functional user experience. And so for that, uh, I'm going to be doing a demo today where I'm going to uh, test some uh, custom implementations that have been done inside of my Salesforce. Uh, specifically, I'm going to be working with the contacts flow. Uh, I want to create some UI tests 
uh, some API tests. Um, and then I want to be able to expand that coverage on the API tests um, to, uh, to cover all the different permutations. Uh, I don't have any tests right now. So I'm going to be using Parasoft to start from scratch. Uh, and I'm going to start right here inside of the browser. Um, we can create tests uh, through recording uh, the interfaces uh, for both UI through Parasoft Selenic and through the APIs using Parasoft SOATest. Uh, the Parasoft ecosystem or the Parasoft recorder understands Salesforce and understands how element locators uh, should be best constructed. It understands how to dynamically construct weight conditions. Uh, and it also understands the dynamic nature of Salesforce front-end APIs. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start a recording and I'm going to do both of those things at once. I'm going to get those UI actions that I will create uh, UI tests from and those API actions. So let me go ahead and log in to my Salesforce system. Go ahead and put my username here, password, log in. Okay, so uh, like I said today, I'm going to be working on an invoice flow. Specifically, I'm going to be working through some contacts. So what I want to do right now is I want to create a contact. So you see that I have two contacts here, Lisa Simpson and Bart Simpson. So naturally, I'm going to create a new contact uh, for, let's say, Homer Simpson. So we'll give Homer a first name here, last name. Uh, Homer needs an email. Um, seems like kind of huh, email Homer would have. And then there's one more required field, which is my lead source. So we'll go ahead and say discover.org. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this save button. Uh, that will then create the contact. Okay, great. Now what I want to do is I want to clean up after myself. So let's go ahead and delete that contact. Okay. So that is my use case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop my recording and I'm going to go through two distinct workflows. The first workflow is to create the UI test. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, okay, we're going to see another platform uh, where we're going to create, you know, these UI tests inside of a proprietary ecosystem. Incorrect. We're actually going to create these tests in pure Selenium. We have the option of creating them in JUnit or TestNG. Uh, but for the Parasoft solution, the best way to move fast is to use the most common UI testing solution. In this case, as I said, Selenium. So let's go ahead and name this. I'll call this Salesforce Contacts. I could give it a description. More importantly, though, I can give it a, a, a requirement. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook it up with something in a Jira that I have. I'm going to go ahead and download that recording. Okay. We'll call this Salesforce Contacts and we'll save it. We're gonna work with that in just a second. Now, remember what I said, at the same time, we're also recording the API traffic that takes place in the system. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, create test asset. This is gonna think for a second and use AI to construct an API test scenario, but we'll deal with that in just a second. Let's go ahead and just close that out. All right, so I have, uh, I have my UI tests, I have my API tests, Let's go ahead and uh, look at those tests. So I'm going to open Eclipse. Parasoft Selenic is a plugin for Eclipse and IntelliJ that allows you to, you, you know, work in your in your your uh, most uh, familiar IDEs and create these pure Java Selenium tests. If I wanted to, I could actually merge a test right here into an existing uh, project, but I want to start totally from scratch. So I'm going to create a Selenium Java project from from scratch. I'll call this Salesforce uh, contacts. I'll do a little underscore here, contacts. And I'm going to grab that UI recording that I just uh, created. Okay. I'm going to give it a package, uh, something like com, the name of my company, and then the uh, piece that I'm working on, which is contacts. And then we'll call it, we'll give this a class, uh, test contacts create. Okay, we'll hit finish. And that's all I need to do. I actually now have a Selenium Java test. Here in this case, I'm using uh, JUnit 5. 
but you'll see that it's uh, gone ahead and put together all the bits and pieces that are required to use Selenium in Salesforce and takes a lot of the, the, the post manipulation out of it. Additionally, I'm using an industry best practice known as the page object model. Now, the reason that this is an industry best practice is because it makes really highly maintainable uh, test cases because it creates uh, elements and locators as reusable objects that you can define in one location. And if you ever have to change uh, those elements, you just change it in this one spot and it propagates through the rest of the test. Uh, and again, this is, this is partially why Selenium is so powerful in uh, Salesforce. And by using the page object model, you're, you're, you're taking ultimate advantage. But I wanna go fast. So let's go ahead and execute this test. So I'm gonna run this with Selenic. And we're just gonna play right back exactly what we recorded inside of Salesforce. Now, one of the other things that's quite powerful about this is the way that we construct a lot of these original locators uh, uh, and uh, uh, weight conditions. Uh, you see, we, we understand how elements are constructed inside of Salesforce, usually using something dynamic like an ID uh, that changes all the time. And so uh, we try to create the, 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 the best element locators possible by looking at other things that uh, uh, Salesforce provides, like class names, um, even using really intelligent strategies to pivot uh, from a label to a field. Uh, OK, well, that's great. I just ran my test. Uh, it passed the first time, which is pretty spectacular. Um, what I want to do now, though, is I want to talk about change. And I want to talk about maintenance. So as I expressed earlier, we have the, the page object model, which helps us um, update our tests if they were to change. And, and that simplifies the change process. But how do we know what's changed and how to quickly update that test? And that's where Selenix AI uh, becomes quite powerful. So when I just ran that test, what I did was I was actually watching and I was capturing all of the information um, in the browser about the elements that I was clicking on, the different pages, and I was using that inside of um, Parasoft Selenic to understand uh, how successful each one of the tests uh, was on clicking the elements, navigating the pages. The reason that I do this is because as applications change, Selenium tests break. And this is why we see a lot of people resistant to using Selenium uh, in something like a Salesforce. Parasoft Selenic can generate recommendations uh, for filled locators and weight conditions, and even things like stale element references uh, or changing IDs and give you new locators and even self-heal the tests at runtime. So I'd like, to, I'd like to give you an example of that. So I'm gonna turn on a couple of options. First, I'm gonna perform self-healing, uh, and then I'm going to say, go ahead and give me a report and tell me what happens when the test fails. And additionally, I'd like to understand some performance metrics about my application. I wanna know if any of my tests take longer than they uh, usually do to execute. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that, and now I want to break my test. So in my application, when I created that Homer uh, entry, I clicked the save button. But let's say that didn't always say save. Let's say in a previous version, that said continue. Okay, this, this kind of thing can happen. We just change a button, we change a label, we change where a tab is. Uh, it's, a, it's a small change, but it could really break the Selenium test. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna execute this and we're gonna see uh, Selenix self-healing not only fix the change, but also provide us back a recommendation on how to update the locator. So I'm gonna actually move the Salesforce UI here to the left. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and log in. Wait for this page here to load. Okay, we'll go ahead and create a new contact. Okay, now, now keep your eyes on the console on the right-hand side. It's trying to click save. It can't. It's thinking. It says, you know what? I'm going to try some different locators. It found one. It clicked the save button. My test proceeds. My test did not fail and was automatically healed from a, from, from a breaking change because of the AI in Parasoft Selenic. See, it makes Selenic easy, or excuse me, it makes Selenium 
easier to use. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this report. So this is our Parasoft Selenic report, and what it's saying is, yeah, you had a test that, 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 uh, that uh, you executed. It didn't pass, but it was automatically self-healed. And it, it says here, uh, I was not able to click on this continue button. And also provides us with a screenshot to say, this is where my problem was. Okay. But because of the AI, the test did proceed forward. Why so? Because when it encountered that continue button, it went back and took a look at the different uh, ways that the page was constructed and said, you know what? Actually, if I use this element locator, save, or maybe this or this, you'll see it's providing different locators to us to make it uh, easier uh, to choose one that makes sense for our organization strategy. It says you'll have a 98% confidence factor that this will, will work uh, in the test. And guess what? I also tried it and it was successful. It also provides us test details and a stack trace so that we can feel confident in using this in our UI test execution. Okay. Now, if I were to go back into my IDE, I would say, okay, so I know that there's something about the test that needs to be updated. And I see that those locator recommendations were provided right here back into my IDE. Now, not only can I, can I see those element locators, but I can actually jump right to the line of code and automatically update that locator. I get my save button. I can go ahead and re-execute my test and feel confident that this, uh, this, this, this change that was applied uh, will fix the Selenium test execution. And this completely uh, or significantly reduces the test maintenance associated with those UI tests. But there's one other thing that I want to point out before we move on, and that is execution times. Now, in this case, this test actually failed my execution time threshold. You'll notice here that the test actually collected an average of 30.21 seconds to execute that test, but in this case, it took 35 seconds. This is an interesting thing for me to, to keep tabs on as I'm executing uh, the different Selenium tests, because if a new lightning element is introduced and slows down the user experience, then we can get notified for which use cases are impacted. And we can understand uh, what we need to do going forward. Okay, so that was uh, the, um, how we can quickly create UI tests and get running with that. Um, what I'd like to do now is hand that back to Mark uh, so we can talk about uh, the next stage. Mark? Great, thanks, Chris. So uh, let's see if I can, uh, there we go, get the slides to translate and move forward. Great, okay, so. What we just talked about was how we could test better. Um, and actually, Chris mentioned this uh, at, at the beginning, that there's actually a, a number of folks that out there that say using Selenium is too complicated, it's too brittle, um, and especially within the Salesforce ecosystem. The bottom line is you can use Selenium, uh, Selenium to test Salesforce. And Parasol Selenic makes that easier. As you saw there, Chris was very, uh, could very quickly create uh, the test cases. And then through the self-healing, we're able to handle changes in the UI um, so that as the UI changes, so in, in our little fictitious example here, the, the button, we were looking for the continue button, but we still found the save button. By doing that, we're able to eliminate your overhead associated with maintenance really just to, turning into a, an, ins, a, 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 an insignificant a activity of importing results and clicking a few buttons to update the tests. The key thing as well is that the, while the tests are written in Java, we're not talking about building a, you know, a multi-layered E2 EEE -E 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 cloud-based application. We're talking about using Java as a scripting language to create your test scripts. And really, as we're, we're moving through that maturity model um, of adopting our technologies, um, the, the barrier are for adopting Selenic, sorry, so adopting Selenium really is significantly uh, reduced with Selenic. Then the last thing that Chris talked about there was performance benchmarking. Performance benchmarking is critical for Salesforce applications. As you're all aware, as you start to adopt the Lightning experience, those elements are loading dynamically. 
And you need to understand when changes in the UI are negatively impacting the performance of your specific use cases. Using performance benchmarking, we're able to very quickly identify those and using the weight condition self-healing within Selenic, avoid those tests from artificially breaking your uh, CI-CD pipeline and ensuring that you can continue forward with your, your delivery process. So as we are talking about delivering and accelerating that process and using this to identify the problems earlier, let's talk about now how we can increase our test coverage and actually reduce the amount of time associated with doing the, the test execution part. So Chris, go ahead and let, let's go ahead and talk about how we can make testing faster. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. All right. So when we created this UI test, one thing that I pointed out was that we, we covered that use case, uh, but our, our performance benchmark was saying, okay, average 30 seconds, this execution took 35 seconds. What I'd like to do actually is I want to I keep that. I want to I keep that report and put it off to the side because it's going to become important for us in just a second. Because at the same time that I created those uh, API tests, I also created UI tests inside of our API testing solution, Parasoft SOA test. So here I am, Parasoft SOA test. And when I created those, uh, those tests, you saw that little pop up here in the corner. What it was actually doing was delivering that test over here uh, to my uh, API testing engine. And here it is, Salesforce contacts. Let's open the box and look at the API tests. Okay, so this, what you're seeing here, is all of the APIs that were called in sequence from the browser to the front end API. Now, it's not just a sequence of uh, API tests. These were created with AI. And what that means is that when we created the tests, we were looking for dynamic information that was being exchanged between the different steps. Things like uh, FUID tokens, aura headers, um, uh, session IDs, uh, so that we could no negotiate the authentication and the dynamic data and the, and the IDs that are being populated as you're going through a sequence. And you'll notice that we've created a whole bunch of smart tools, smart header data banks, smart JSON extractors, or a token extractors. Uh, basically, Parasoft's doing the heavy work to make sure that your API test works uh, the first time as expected. So let's go ahead and just collapse this guy. And I'd like to show you how this would work against uh, the application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this UI here. I'm going to put it on one side. We'll put SOA test on the other. And let's just go ahead and execute this sequence. We'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and sorry, I got it bar in my way here. We'll hit play. And so what we should be seeing now is the exact same action that took place in the UI now being executed from the API perspective. You can actually see in the console all the posts and look, Homer just showed up. Now we'll do some more posts and some more gits and then we should delete Homer and then there's your use case. Okay. 63 APIs were just called, reproducing the exact use case that we had in the A UI with the API, but look at the time. That only took us 19 seconds. Now, that compared to our original 35 seconds, that's a pretty significant reduction. To perform the same um, uh, use case that we're doing from a validation perspective. Now, we could take this even further. You see, when I'm actually interacting with the Salesforce application, a lot of these API calls actually have to do with uh, asynchronous calls that are made from the front end to populate those form IDs. And they're not actually necessary uh, to, to, to perform the action that I'm looking for, which is creating the Homer contact. So what I've done is I've actually reduced down uh, that API sequence into just the required calls, which are these eight calls for uh, authentication and then this one dynamic or excuse me this one post to create the contact now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna log back in to uh, Salesforce Got dog 
look at my contacts. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing here and we're going to execute this uh, sequence of events uh, here starting with authentication and we're going to create uh, a contact. So we'll see uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, post create, six seconds later, and there's our Homer J. Simpson. Now that's a significant reduction. Now I'm doing that same use case in just a fraction of the time. And what's also interesting about this use case is if we look at the data that's being provided to actually create the contact, there's a lot of fields that are available in that contact UI that we just simply didn't interact with. Let me make this a little bigger. You'll see that we have things like um, birthday, account site, um, maybe we do things like uh, the middle name or mailing address. And so we would want to validate all of those fields in the UI, but it might become cumbersome and, and could break actually quite often if we created those all as UI tests. So instead, what's a really good strategy is to create a subset of UI tests to validate the user's experience and then cover all the rest of your permutation testing using the APIs. Let me show you an example of that. So here, instead of just creating a contact, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a bunch of contacts and I'm gonna create them with different types of um, data. So I've just created a little data source here to say, hey, I'm gonna create all these different characters. I'm gonna give them a different account site. I'm also gonna use data generation to automatically generate a phone number. Uh, and then I'm just gonna shove that into the um, into my Salesforce system. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shrink up some of this. We'll just assume the authentication has already taken place because we have our token. And now I'm just gonna fire this, this test off. So here we see at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's gonna go through each one of those characters doing a data generation, a client, uh, and then validating that client. And so we say, 18 tests that executed in 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and take a look here inside of my Salesforce and look at all that. And as you can see, from just that one simple recording, I was able to get deeper and deeper and deeper into the application, creating more and more tests to, to cover more aspects of, of Salesforce. And it just kept getting quicker and quicker and quicker. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back to Mark to talk us through that solution. Mark? Thanks, Chris. So yeah, so, we, so what we were just focused on here was how we can accelerate the testing practice, but doing it through the use of API testing. Your UI testing is still a critical component in your testing strategy. You need to validate the functional workflow. You need to validate the non-functional performance characteristics of the UI interaction. But what we can do, and this is the unique capabilities of PowerSoft technology, is by intercepting and understanding the underlying API calls that those UI, that the UI is making. We're able to apply our AI engine to stitch those together into an API test scenario. So having not a series of isolated autonomous transactions, but having them chained together with data values that we've extracted and relationships that we've learned by analyzing the traffic and analyzing the different testing scenarios. What this can then do is, as Chris showed us, we can run through a variety of different data permutations. We can pull that data from external data sources, such as Excel files or database queries. We can also generate the data as well, so using like the data generation tool directly there within SOA test. This gives us a highly optimized strategy for running through literally thousands of permutations in a fraction of the time. This also opens, and opens us up to be able to do a very efficient performance testing of your customizations within the Salesforce ecosystem and your underlying Apex code that you're deploying out into, through your sandbox into your production environment. 
So we've now got the UI handled. Uh, we've got a, a standard open uh, source framework being leveraged that we can scale, that we can deploy, um, and that we can apply intelligence to so we're not bogged down by our brittle, um, uh, the brittleness associated with UI testing practices. We've got API testing that allows us to supercharge that now as well. So I'm now doing a lot of testing, um, but I'm gonna run into the next challenge, and that challenge is the challenge of the test environment itself. As I have more applications connected to Salesforce um, and uh, both consuming data from there as well as sending data in, your, your cross-team collaboration becomes a challenge. So Chris, let's now talk about how we can start to work within the ecosystem. And let's talk about a use case where within Salesforce, I'm actually consuming or displaying data or bringing data in from an external system. Absolutely. All right. So let's uh, let's get let's get deep. So inside of this application, when I'm actually creating a contact, I'm not just creating a contact for fun. I'm creating the contact because it's a part of an of a larger um, uh, process. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the Parasoft continuous testing platform. Go ahead and log in here. Uh, the Parasoft continuous testing platform. Uh, is an on-premise or cloud-based uh, dashboard that allows me to uh, see the different environments, execution flows inside of my different applications, uh, create API tests, virtual services, generate test data, and associate them with my use cases, with my workflows. I can then use those to run an automation, dynamically deploy containerized environments, et cetera. So what I'm actually doing when I'm creating that account is I'm eliciting an entire uh, uh, invoice flow that goes from creating the invoice, creating the account, performing the credit check, and et cetera. What I'm doing when I'm creating that account, though, is I have connected to this Simpsons API um, that has this database of characters and different um, episodes that those characters are in. And what I am doing is I'm, I've integrated that API into my Salesforce flow. So those who were keen-eyed would have noticed that when I, had, when I created a character or when I uh, created a contact, here under details, I have this integrated API where I could actually call out and get various episodes that character was associated with in the different seasons. Okay, I'm just having fun here uh, showing the power of Salesforce and their integrations. So here I see um, that in the, the fourth season, there's a couple of, a whole bunch of episodes, some descriptions, Disney, uh, Disney Plus ID and Simpson World ID, which is important for the invoicing for this to make sure that this data gets pushed all the way through the pipeline. Now, what's really interesting about this is that this API is actually pay to play. Every time I call it, uh, it costs me money, which should be very familiar to anybody um, using pay-to-play APIs that are integrated in Salesforce. But the re what's actually happening here is I have simulated this API. And I did that through recording, very similar to what you saw when I was creating the API test. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of turn that on and let's go ahead and look at that service. So here's the service over here. Um, it's called the Simpsons Virtual Service. And basically I just have a whole bunch of different episodes that I had uh, recorded and created a data model uh, for the different types of information that's in an episode. We're going to go into this aspect of uh, using data simulation to reduce costs in a later webinar series, and we look forward to your input uh, into what you'd want to see in those. Uh, the advantage here, though, is that I'm completely in control of the data that is connected to my Salesforce implementation. So let's go and change some of that data. So here we are back in Salesforce. What do we look at? Uh, uh, season four. So let's go find season four right here. And let's say that what I really wanted to do was to say, instead of Bart and Lisa being horrified when their summer camp uh, was not uh, as fun as they expected, let's make that actually uh, Rod and Todd Flanders. How about Rod and Todd? Now, of course, this is, this is just having fun with the Simpsons, but imagine if you wanted to inject uh, customers that had all sorts of different data, um, maybe data that wasn't even possible in the real Salesforce system, and you wanted to see how that would interact with your UIs. By using a virtual service, 
I am now completely in control of that data, of that service. I can deploy it whenever I want on demand uh, and create multiple swim lanes for my application and really unblock my DevOps pipeline um, by, by uh, essentially being able to test constraint free. So again, lots more to that, but I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back to Mark uh, so he can, he can talk us through. Mark? Thank you, Chris. Yeah, so I, I, as, as we said, this is a relatively straightforward example there of how you can simulate an external service that's loading data into Salesforce. This will actually be a subject of a subsequent webinar. We'll go into a lot more detail around not just simulating an external, but also simulating your uh, composite APIs or your APIs that you're leveraging within Salesforce as well. So stay tuned for an email from uh, Parasoft inviting to you to the, the subsequent uh, webinar covering that topic. Um, but really what the point here is that we can start to decouple our testing efforts and decouple the teams. So often when you're testing a, uh, a, a you know, system of systems, you run into situations where the external systems you're connecting to are either unavailable, they're pay to play, or you know, for example, you can't get them in the state that you need. Um, as we start deploying more and more microservice technology within the industry, you have the ability to kind of stand up individual instances very easily, but you don't have the ability to fully control the functional behavior or the performance characteristics of that external dependency. And this is where service virtualization really uncouples your teams, but also uncouples the testing dependencies. Also, as you're developing a system that is consuming data from Salesforce, you want to be able to performance test that system that's doing the consumption of data from Salesforce. But due to your coupling with the Salesforce backend system, you're going to start hitting API limits. And what we can do with service virtualization is eliminate those API limit constraints within your test environments so that you can test more often, more frequently. And the key thing here is all around test better, test much more than you could, uh, you test, test it completely, test faster, and test cheaper, both from the point of view of creation, but also the environment itself. Now, these are the three key areas, but there's something else we need to consider. And we need to consider that we're not just one team working within our org. We have many teams working together on multiple applications, all trying to coordinate activities so that you don't damage the production environment. Here, what we need to do is to provide a centralized view of quality. And this is where Parasoft solution really shines. We can bring together all of this quality data into a centralized quality dashboard that goes across all of the teams, and also correlates that data with your user stories in JIRA, for example, to give you context and traceability. Because if you have a test failure, you need to understand what that use case that is impacting, but you also need to understand as the teams are rolling forward and, and starting to bring their code changes together, you need to ensure that people are in essence running clean before they get into the collaboration environment. Now, this kind of is, is how the Parasoft Salesforce testing solution can help. But let's talk about a specific real world use case. And we're gonna talk about a client of ours that's in the travel and hospitality industry, um, a major uh, hotel and gaming uh, corporation, and how we were able to enable them with an annual cost savings of around about a million dollars per year, um, and how we were able to make them become Better, faster, and cheaper. So as we look at better, um, the first thing was obviously validating the UI. And how can we help with validating the UI? Well, traditional um, UI testing solutions from some of the, the more traditional vendors in the space typically have a lot of problems testing Salesforce elements within uh, the pages, the dynamic nature of the UI, the weight conditions, the locator strategies, um, the way that the UI layout changes in a reactive uh, design way, testing for mobile des uh, versus desktop. Um, traditional approaches kind of run with, uh, are problematic. However, this team was very cautious around adopting Selenium 
due to their skills of the team um, and due to the perceived maintainability issues, which actually aren't perceived. If you're just taking raw selenium and you're using the wrong locator strategies, um, if you don't have the right ways of handling weight conditions, um, then you are going to find that your tests have a lot of test maintenance associated with them. With Parasoft, we were actually able to not only you know, help them with that migration to Selenium, but most importantly, we were able to take one of the most complex business critical workflows that they could not create with their existing technology. And within a couple of minutes, we had a test scenario up and running based upon the recorder workflow that Chris showed you today. Secondly, testing faster. Um, the execution of the UI tests, frankly, was taking too long. Um, this was really much the case in the traditional application, but even in sales in, in Selenic, the test, the UI tests were just not re returning um, back data quick enough for the teams to understand the impact of the changes that they were making. They were having to wait literally overnight um, uh, to get feedback from the process. It also, the changes in the UI that were happening often requ required a massive refactoring effort within the test scenario. So what that meant is I do a change into my source control system, um, I deploy it into my, in, into my sandbox, then my test automation runs overnight. Then the next day I get a whole bunch of test failures, now I have to start refactoring my tests. That doesn't take a day. That typically takes several days and was consuming a lot of time from their sprint. And then once I've got it up and running, you know, then I kind of, you know, the next changes come along and I'm spending all my time refactoring the test suites. With Parasoft, we were able to achieve ex uh, full test coverage, um, or should I say execution of the full test suite to get full test coverage uh, within an hour, meaning that the CICD pipeline, the automated workflows, gave them meaningful feedback within an acceptable time period. Now, there are ways of actually optimizing further, so you can actually reduce to even less than an hour. So one of the questions that came through earlier asking about something like that. Um, but the key thing here is you're able to actually get the feedback within the time frame that's appropriate for your team. And then last but not least, and actually probably really, to be fair, this was the first problem that we had with this client and the first problem that we helped them with, which was the data inconsistencies and system availability within their test environment. Because of how the systems were connect, connected together and because of uh, different teams requiring access to different systems and updating them and changing the data, they were not able to keep their testing on schedule, which ultimately was, reduced, uh, was resulting in re uh, releases missing their schedule as well. With Parasoft, we were able to leverage the service virtualization to unblock the pipeline and in essence give the test automation feedback in a reliable and stable way so that they didn't have to start changing, sorry, chasing infrastructure issues. They were able to focus on test regressions and getting that feedback uh, in a, re a reliable and effective way so they could ultimately get the um, ROI associated with their test automation efforts. So hopefully this was a, 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 a interesting conversation for everybody today. We've got a whole bunch of questions, so I'm going to start going through those in a second. Um, but firstly, um, if you would like um, a demonstration of how Parasoft's solution can work within your Salesforce application, please reach out to us here at info.parasoft.com. Info we will be doing follow-up emails as well following today's webinar. You'll actually see um, an email um, inviting you to complete our uh, five-question uh, Salesforce uh, testing survey. Um, that will be to enter uh, for an opportunity to win an Amazon gift card. Um, and also in that survey, we'll be asking questions about what are your testing challenges and what other things you would like to hear about in future webinars. Chris alluded to that we will be covering um, uh, test data, uh, data management, and also integration testing with service virtualization and how we can leverage that. But we'd love to hear from you about other topics that you think would be um, interesting for you as you go through your uh, Salesforce um, adoption. 
Okay, so with that being said, um, we've got a, a, a nice number of questions here. So I'm actually going to start picking some of them off. If I don't get to your question, then we will be following up um, uh, over email. So actually, I'm going to just pick one here, Chris, and I'm going to give it to you while I review the other questions as well. Um, uh, so how do you handle dynamic IDs? I think you touched upon this already in the Selenium piece. This question was asked earlier, but do you want to go ahead and touch on that uh, while yeah. I just go through some of these other questions? So that's one of the biggest problems with Salesforce from a UI testing perspective is that because forms are dynamically generated, the IDs uh, that are used typically follow a pattern of uh, four numeric numbers, a colon, three numeric numbers, and then a semicolon and a letter. They can vary from that, but um, it makes it almost impossible to uniquely identify the element without being really smart about it. So um, what Parasoft does is it understands that it's in a Salesforce application and it uses a whole bunch of different strategies with things that are known to be stable in Salesforce. Um, uh, and, and from those, it can say, well, even though this has a dynamic ID, I see that maybe it's in this span and maybe there's some other element pieces that I can look at and join those things together. And that's the way that I can over time consistently find that element. Um, and so that's, that's specifically what we've done to, to enhance the Selenium aspect of it is we are adding intelligence to it so that it knows how to do its best job inside of Salesforce. And I should mention, by the way, that Selenium itself works quite well in Salesforce. It's just understanding how to do these smart things. And so that's Thanks, how we Chris. And I'm actually gonna, I'm going to throw out a couple of things. There's a few around uh, the Selenium stuff. So I'll actually, um, one of them is, uh, can, uh, does, does Selenic work if, um, if the Salesforce implementation is using iframes? Uh, the short answer to that question is yes. Yes. Um, uh, uh, can Selenic be used with customized CI CD pipeline? Um, uh, do you want to talk to that one real quick, Chris? Absolutely. So Selenium, everything that I showed you today in a Parasoft Selenic was done in an IDE, but that's just so you can create and do the initial run of your test. What you're actually creating is a test NG or a J unit script. Those J units or test NGs can be run as a part of your build process uh, in build systems like Jenkins or GitLab or uh, Microsoft Azure DevOps, whatever, whatever you're using to make things easy from a data loading and generation and, and environment deployment and API testing execution, we provide plugins to systems like Jenkins and Azure DevOps, um, as well as a really rich uh, and powerful REST API that allows you to uh, construct those executions, uh, schedule them, uh, run them over time. And then all of the data is fed back into the ecosystem, uh, aggregated together and pushed into the dashboard that Mark showed us uh, so that we can enable cross team collaboration, understand changes and identify which tests are associated to those and their, uh, their requirements. So yes, it's very DevOps friendly. Yeah, and, and actually I'm, I'm gonna tie in a couple of things to that as well related to some of the questions which are, so one of them is how, how do you scale um, Selenium across multiple servers to reduce overall execution time? Um, and then a parallel question is that can I, can I run the test in the cloud? And be, because, as Chris said, these are standard Selenium scripts. So yes, you can uh, parallelize execution, uh, leveraging uh, Selenium Grid. Um, you can also uh, integrate with things like Source Labs or, or Browser Stack. Um, and then when it comes to cloud-based deployments, obviously you can use those ecosystems as well as you know, just you know, a, a, a Selenium Grid on top of something like a, an AWS or an Azure. Um, actually, when we talk about cloud, though, it's probably worthwhile also mentioning that um, Parasoft Virtualize and Parasoft um, SOA Test, which are uh, kind of obviously for the API testing and the service virtualization, both of those are available as images within um, Azure and AWS um, and um, that can uh, you know, enable you to stand up dynamic infrastructure. Um, and SOA Test, also those API tests that Chris showed can be executed um, from within your CI/CD infrastructure to um, dockerizing both SOA test uh, deployment as well as actually virtualized deployments can be dockerized as well. So I think I've touched upon everything there from a cloud perspective. Did you want to add anything to that, Chris? No, just, just I wanted to double down on the Docker statement that uh, our solutions are available as Docker images uh, that can be deployed into your ecosystem. So if you're orchestrating a, you know, a, a cloud strategy and something 
like uh, Kubernetes or Pivotal Cloud Foundry, it's very, uh, it's very easy to integrate with that system so that you can get those tests and those virtual services and that data integrated into those clusters. And uh, questions are still coming in. So I, I've seen them coming in. I'm going to start kind of reorganizing them based on the topic. There's actually a, a subsequent one is like, can the development team schedule or execute tests without assistance from the test automation engineer? As Chris was mentioning, these plug right into your CI CD pipeline. So, so you can execute them continuously, automatically in that way. Uh, what I will say is that um, our, the, the case that we talked about a few moments ago, uh, they actually have a couple of different workflows. They have integration with Jenkins, um, but then they also do have, they build a, a little portal that sits on top of that test automation suite uh, that allows them to kind of, in essence, kick off the execution of a specific test through a very basic web UI that they built. Um, but obviously you can also do the same kind of thing through integration with something like a source labs, uh, providing that, uh, that, that UI. Um, okay. Um, there's a, Question about BDD. So uh, does Parasoft support BDD? Do you want to take that one, Chris? Absolutely. Uh, short answer, yes. Um, the uh, Selenium tests uh, that you record uh, can be connected to your BDD Cucumber scripts if you're, if you're in the, the Java world. Um, those code snippets, uh, and the, it, it, really it's the page objects, can be associated with um, there's free plugins for Eclipse and IntelliJ for creating your step definitions. Um, the really important part from a Parasoft perspective is that when you execute via BDD, our AI powered recommendations and self healing uh, not only work in that in those frameworks, but they also present the details back to you uh, uh, associated to the feature that you're testing. And you can even drill down to the step def so that it makes it really easy if you're trying to uh, enable a non-technical team to build out test automation against the requirement. It makes it easier for them to understand what they need to do if that test automation starts failing. Because feature goes to them, they understand why it happened. Step depth goes to the de developer who created the step depth so they can fix it. Great, thank you, Chris. Uh, good time for a couple more questions here. Um, um, there's a few around test data, so I'm actually going to try and bring those all together. But let me kind of give you uh, this one here. So um, can I reuse tests for performance testing of my Salesforce application? Um, I think that's an, an interesting one, especially when you're talking about the, the performance testing of customization. So do you, do you want to talk a little bit about reuse? reuse? Yeah. Um, so there's, a, there's the, the shortest distance for performance testing uh, is those API tests. Uh, because we've stitched them together with the AI, you could just run those immediately in uh, uh, under load with a specific number of threads or a specific number of virtual users. Um, the Selenium test is a J unit. So the J unit can be run in our framework uh, under load um, much the same way. A really cool thing to do though is to combine those two things together where you run a, a set of um, Selenium J units or test NGs, whatever, uh, uh, to validate the customer's experience under load, and then you put the load on Salesforce using the APIs. Um, it's pretty, it doesn't require as much domain knowledge uh, to stitch together all the different dynamic information, uh, and you can get pretty good information. But I will mention that a key to understanding which of those to run is that performance benchmarking, because that will tell you when some user experience is misbehaving, and that's where you can then turn your attention and say, all right, let's, let's run a test here. Yeah, and it's, it's worth also considering that there are going to be some things that are within your control or the things that you've developed or you've extended on where performance testing of those particular components are going to be relevant. Uh, performance testing of the broader um, Salesforce ecosystem is going to be important from an SLA perspective so you understand what the criteria is on, on particular use cases and performance benchmarking can help very much with that. Um, but being able to do that targeted performance testing against a particular element or a component within your flow that is the specific piece of code that you've implemented is a really very powerful way of honing in um, on being able to put your, your specific piece of code um, under stress. Okay, so I mentioned that we've got a few test data questions, so I'm going to kind of just throw a few out there. We've, we're kind of at the top of the hour, but let's see if we can take some of these. So I'm going to just read them as we go, and I'm going to paraphrase them a little bit. Um, uh, so kind of one of the questions is, um, 
Uh, does the data generator help with synthetic, synthetic data preparation? So I think uh, talking a little bit about uh, test, synthetic test data uh, would be useful there, Chris. Uh, another question asking about um, doing data cleanup afterwards. Um, so I think that's a, a teardown test kind of conversation. Um, and then the other one was cr around creating uh, different sets of test data for different purposes. Obviously, we have our data sources as well as the test data. Uh, modeling stuff as well, though, Chris. So I know that that is a lot of things to talk about, but maybe just touch upon them at a high level. And I think that is probably one of the topics that we're going to get asked for in a subsequent webinar. Yeah, hundred percent. So data generation uh, is necessary, no matter wh whether you're doing, um, you know, the UI, the API, or the uh, or you're doing a virtual service like I showed today. Um, the engine that we have allows you to um, generate uh, data, fictitious data, synthetic data. Um, it learns um, what the constraints are from the data by any recorded traffic that you get. You'll see a, a recorded traffic is kind of a theme for us. We think it's a nice way to, to get going fast. Um, that data can then be uh, extended, manipulated, masked, even uh, some subsetting uh, to make sure you're getting the right data and then loaded into all the different solutions. So yes, um, that is definitely something we're going to show on a subsequent uh, step. As far as cleanup, I don't know if that question was asking about the empty oracles, uh, leaving those uh, connections open, or if it was referring to leaving those Simpsons characters sitting there in the table. I'll answer both questions. Uh, from a cleanup perspective on the oracles, we do close connection. And yes, as Mark alluded to, you'd want to tear down to go through and delete and reset your environment. All of that is um, totally possible. I didn't delete my characters because that would have made a really boring demo. I wanted, I wanted you guys to see them all. Okay, great, Chris. Um, thank you everybody for joining today. I know I didn't get to all the questions. Uh, we will be following up on those. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, look out for the email. Um, there'll actually be, uh, I know Joy's been posting um, some links um, in, the, in the chat here. So um, uh, go ahead and submit the survey. Um, definitely will be interested in hearing about other topics um, around uh, testing challenges to Salesforce that you'd like us to go into in more detail. So with that being said, thank you very much. Everybody have a great day and uh, be safe.